to your screen. Hopefully that's on the Zoom room or um, on the projector behind me. Since today's week is a little bit more abstract, focusing on just communication skills in general, um, today is not graded in a traditional sense. It's not graded at all, but it isn't uh, something that you'll be turning in or submitting or like doing paperwork about. This is more of an experiential, try it, see what you like, or not like, but like see what you find out um, sort of day today. Very more experimental and experience-based. It works really well in third period. So just trust the process. Um, in conversing, there's two halves to a conversation, right? To a good conversation, at least. At least two halves. And in order to gain those two halves, there's a specific type of listening that you need to participate in called active listening. Maybe you've heard this before, but I want to go over it in some uh, some more detail here if you haven't. I do hear somebody's computer has my voice coming out of it, which is fine. But if you could mute that, if you're not using it, that would be good. Um, but it's okay. Anyway, so we're going to look at this first link right here, active versus passive listening. And I'm not going to read this whole thing to you here, but I want to explain to you what active listening is because learning about the way that this breaks down, and this is your chance to start applying some of the things I'm talking about here in this article. I'm not talking about them. The author is. Um, active listening improves your conversation skills naturally. I, just for context, have always been a person, hi, good morning, who kind of struggles to initiate conversations, right? I find it really intimidating. You kind of get in that overthinking snowball of what do I want to talk about? Is it interesting? Blah, 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 blah. And then I end up, as a result, not saying anything because I'm too busy thinking about what I'm going to say as compared to enjoying a conversation with another person. So this is where active listening comes in, and this is where it has helped me a ton. Active listening is nice because it breaks down, or it says exactly what it does on the tin because you are listening with purpose. You are spending energy, not a ton of energy, but you are dedicated to listening to whatever the person has to say. And this goes in a lot of examples. You can prove to me right now you're giving it a shot by listening to what I'm saying. Active listening takes effort. It takes energy. But the energy that you put into things, this is just in general, you're going to get back out of. It's the cool part about doing something right. Um, but active listening is a way to really make the other part of your conversation feel like you're interested. You know, there's body language to active listening. And... The main difference between the other version, passive listening, where you're not really engaged with the conversation, you're just kind of hearing the sound, tuning out the teacher or focused on other things, your mind is wandering, all valid reasons, but that's called passive listening because the terms active versus passive mean one's taking energy, one's spending something, and the other is not. That's passive energy. It's otherwise just known as hearing, right? Active listening is actually engaging. Passive listening is just hearing. So if you're not actually um, tuned into what I'm saying right now, you might be a little bit more passively listening. That's okay. Um, let's go down here. This breaks down a little bit more about not all listening is the same, what I'm talking about right here. But active listening comes into play with communications, whether those are professional, personal, um, educational, whatever, because it's a conscious effort that demands your empathy, your effort, your attention, and it takes lots of practice. So you can't expect to be good at it right out of the gate. You've got to be patient with yourself. The quickest ways to start actively listening are to stop waiting for your turn to talk. I know that sounds critical. I don't mean it to be. I know none of you do that. I've not seen any examples. But when you're listening to somebody, you should be actually interpreting and synthesizing what they're saying to you in your own words, making it make sense in your own brain, instead of just waiting for your turn to say the next cool thing. It's about dedicating energy and giving the other person the space, at least one other person in a two-sided conversation, giving the other person the space that they deserve so that they feel valued. And the reason I bring up the energy that you put into something you get out of is because when you do this, you turn your attention towards the other person you actually hear what they say, make your own connections, build upon that, which we'll get into later. Um, that makes them feel a lot more valued and a lot more likely to share things with you that um, improve your relationship, whether that's a professional relationship, whether that's a 
teacher student relationship, a personal relationship between you and your parents, you and your extended family. You can do this anywhere. And it's something that I want you guys to just kind of start paying attention to and maybe making little efforts to do throughout your daily life. And this thing, again, I'm finding a lot as a quick sidebar with Future Ready that I'm explaining that some things that might seem a little bit obvious, but when you hear them out loud and you kind of approach them with your own understanding, your own breakdown of how a thing works, you'll start to notice these things in your everyday life. I mentioned in second period that a lot of the training you guys are receiving, a lot of the education you guys are being exposed to right now is very much, here's how you do this thing. Like if we use math for an example, this is the formula to find the area of a circle. It happens this way every time. You can approach certain aspects of your future after high school um, with that sort of formula, but it doesn't always pan out or it doesn't always lend itself to a formula like something like math would. What I've found in adult life is that there's a basic sort of inform uh, set of knowledge, little tricks that you can kind of use to uh, improve how you gain and understand information. And then the rest of it is just kind of making it up as you go. Okay. If you think about, we talked a little bit back um, or when we, we refocus on the job unit, um, I did not go to school to become a teacher. So I'm not classically trained uh, with the typical curriculum that some of your math, science, English teachers that have had. I just have industry experience. And I told that when I got this job and they're like, that's okay, we will get you up to speed. And that's an example of not knowing exactly how to do something, but people will help you get there. And because I was actively listening to each of these people telling me things, and it's not 100%, sometimes you're burnt out. Sometimes it's not always, um, not always sticking. That's what's gotten me to a point where I feel comfortable doing what I'm doing. I'm still learning a lot, just like you guys are all still learning a lot as well. But by actually spending energy to hear what the person's saying and understanding it in your own terms is active listening. And you can prove to me that you're doing that right now with this lecture today when we get into the later stuff here in a second. I'll wrap this up real fast before we move on to our little bit about small talk. Hi, good morning. Um, active listening takes body language. You can show somebody that you're listening to them actively by turning your, um, your chest, your shoulders open to them so that you can kind of feel the energy of the conversation move back and forth between you. The more that you kind of close off, this is fine. None of these are wrong or right, but these are just examples that I've noticed. If you feel the other person kind of closing off, you'll notice that change in energy a little bit. It's more defensive. Maybe they're not interested in talking as much. That's totally okay. But active listening takes energy and you can communicate it through your body language. So right now, for example, I can see some of you guys looking at me with your chests and belly buttons pointed towards me. That's another one that we used in second period. It's like the belly button kind of points your attention. Um, that's awesome. That's good. But I'm also noticing, and this is not a bad thing, that some of you guys are listening to the screen as compared to looking at me directly. You're still actively listening because you're pointing your energy into the, whatever I'm saying. Um, it just might be in a little bit of a different sort of shape of your body. So I think I've said enough on here. You're welcome to read more on this. There's some interesting information about some of the psychology of active listening. But all I want you to take away from this for now is actually spend energy listening to what other people are saying, especially your teachers. They will appreciate it very much. And so something that I've also noticed in adult life is small talk. There is a lot of differing opinions on small talk. I'm sure you have your own. I have my own. Um, and sometimes they are positive. Sometimes they're negative. Obviously, that, sorry, that's how opinions work. Um, but I actually think that there is a necessary amount of small talk that needs to happen because that's what opens the door to the deeper stuff. That's what gets you further into your personal relationships, your professional relationships that build something called rapport, R-A-P-P-O-R-T, which is just your nice, um, your relationship with other people, your kind of reputation, stuff like that. It all starts with small talk. And since small talk has a reputation of being kind of annoying or just something that we have to do, um, there's ways that you can do it that make it a little bit more fun. Kind of break that flow, break the routine, um, which we'll talk about right now. Um, let me go, where is my tab? That's not it. I think it's this one. Okay, so let's look at this first link right here, the necessary link. 
says seven ways to get better at small talk and why you should. So we're not going to watch this, but I am going to touch on a few of the tips on here. Again, you're always welcome to read more about these. You want to start by not lingering too low on something called low priority topics. And again, just hear me out for a second. This is kind of obvious or like duh information, but imagine, imagine how many times you've had a conversation and you just felt like it's gone nowhere. I've had plenty. I've given, I've conducted plenty where it's just like, we're just talking to fill the silence. Totally normal. But that's something that we're all universally experiencing. And if you know that going in, you can break up that routine and not linger too long on things that you know people are talking about. The very common ones are going to be, um, what do you do for work? What do you do for fun? Those specific questions and like things of that nature. How you can shift this, because I'm not just going to say, oh, this is, hey, don't do this one thing. The alternative that you can do is expand on something that interests you about that person, right? We only have so much time on the earth. There's lots of cool people out there, yourself included. You want to get into their, like, their brain a little bit more than talking about the weather, right? Let's see, what else do we want to talk about? Building on that is kind of skipping these questions about marriage, kids, and work. Again, this is more kind of dedicated to the uh, to the workforce, a little bit more adult lens framed. Um, but it is a, this is another one of those things like that low priority topic. Everybody's talking about their marriage, their kids, or their job. So people are a little bit sick of explaining um, those different parts of their lives. And by skipping these questions, your small talk is going to improve and you're gonna continue down a path towards deeper and deeper conversations, which is the goal of communicating in general, just kind of conversing, getting to know people, understanding how they work, understanding how yourself works. It all starts with small talk. One last thing I'll mention before we move on to the, uh, the last link of the day is you wanna complement unique forms of personal expression in a specific way. It doesn't say in a specific way on this. So, what I find successful in this is instead of complimenting someone's hair or their eyes or something called like their core attire, like their shirt, pants and skirts and other dresses or like leg wear and chest wear, stuff like that. Complimenting those things can feel a little bit um, overstepping if it's a stranger. If you think about like maybe you've been complimented on your hair from someone you'd never seen before and it feels a little bit Ah, it feels like you're kind of being looked at, kind of studied, right? I've definitely experienced this. I know you guys have as well. And so a way around this, because people express themselves through their visual or their, you know, outward clothes and accessories, you want to focus on things that aren't so close to the person's body. So you want to avoid, not avoid, but instead of focusing on eyes, hair, pants, shirts, um, you want to look at things that people kind of change in and out like their accessories. Accessories, because they're not a part of your core body, they feel a little bit more disconnected and a little bit less um, under a microscope And if someone was looking at your hair or complimenting your hair, eyes, shirt, whatever. What this means is, instead of complimenting um, someone's shirt, if you've never met them before, you could try complimenting their watch or their rings or their necklaces because those things are a little bit more separated than the main sorts of body parts uh, and body pieces that the person is working with. Tattoos and piercings also count as accessories, to me at least, because those are things that, you know, you don't really like put on or take off for the most part. So if you see someone with a really interesting tattoo or a very interesting necklace, cool hairpiece, bracelet, that is a great starter small talk that you can break in with because it doesn't feel too much like you're being studied. And I'm sure you've noticed this as well. These are all things, again, This the abstract part of the day is these are just tips that I've found and things that you can try um, in your day-to-day -day life. And there's um, one last thing I wanna show you. This is your final link for the day. Sometimes, like when I'm talking up here and I'm just kind of going, um, it's hard to understand how to actually apply the lesson I'm trying to give you into your real life. I get that. I understand that. So don't feel bad. Don't feel embarrassed if what I'm talking about makes absolutely zero sense. Okay? It's a process learning. It takes time. Everybody does it a little bit different.
And because of that, I'm aware of that. This link, this second one right here, has a lot of like conversation starters that you can just, it's the same sort of tips as the uh, improving on small talk. But if you scroll down towards the topics section, these have some questions that are not typically answered, you know, let me pause this real quick, actually, not the whole screen share, but let's think about when someone goes, hey, how are you doing? What do you automatically default to say? Do you even think about your answer when most of the time someone asks, how are you doing? That's what I'm getting at when I say that there's a lot, there's pieces of small talk that people don't even recognize or not recognize, but they don't even realize is happening. It's default, it's autopilot stuff. I do it, you guys do it, all your teachers do it, your parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, everybody does it. It's natural. This guide aims to break that flow a little bit and start connecting with more people. Everybody was a stranger. Some of your best friends started as strangers. I'm not saying you need to talk to every single stranger you encounter, but you'd be surprised by kind of breaking up the, the normal routine, the regular day-to-day -day stuff, um, how much you can learn about a person and how much you guys can work well together. And that's what these, uh, these topics are kind of going for. These are open-ended questions, not yes or no stuff. These are questions that the answerer, however many there are, can go down any path they would like, which gets into our last and final topic before we start practicing uh, the thing I have in mind today, which is this conversational hack that I've not really discovered but have been using lately that works super well. So before we get into this, I want you guys' input. Is this making sense? Anybody have any like questions so far about what I'm looking for, what I'm trying to get at? Are we good? Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next part then. So this conversation quote hack that I've discovered is this very simple repetition of these two steps. You start with an observation of some kind. That can be a small talk of, hey, I like your bracelets. Hey, I saw you were listening to this band. You know, I saw you at this concert. We're at the same coffee shop. There's tons of different observations that you can make in the small talk direction. The second part that makes your conversation flow very easily and has broken my overthinking habit of not knowing what to say or how to start is this expansion half. So I'll give you an example. Say I'm waiting in line in the coffee shop and the person in front of me has a really cool bag. This bag is an accessory, so it's not very connected to the person's core body. So it's something that you could compliment and that might, um, it's more likely to make them feel um, accepting of the compliment. So my observation would be, hey, I love your back. And then, but that's a general observation. Observations, if we think about the, them in science, are specific. Hey, I love your bag, comma, I love this thing about it, or the strap is cool, or the pattern is nice, or the material looks, looks high quality, right? So that second part that comes with the, uh, that build opens the door to the next half, okay? So I've cast out my observation. I like your bag, the pattern is cool. This first step is completed. To get the conversation flowing is the expansion path of these two steps. Because they'll probably say, you know, you get complimented by someone in line, you go, oh, thank you, or you say nothing, or you just nod, you smile, whatever, an acknowledgement. You can then expand on it and ask, where did you get it? What does it mean? You know. How long have you had it? What's your favorite part about it? It's the question half of this two parts that opens the door to the continued conversation. And then the other person can choose whether or not they want to engage. And then the, let's say that they do. You go, hey, I love your bag. This is cool. Um, what's your favorite part about it? Observation, expansion. And then they'll go one of two ways. They will either engage in the conversation and say, oh, I got it here. I like putting these, th I like how much it can hold. Um, I usually put this, that, and the other thing in there. Um, and that's the end of their statement. Now we can repeat the observation and expansion cycle again, now that we know what's the contents of the bag. Oh, okay. These, com these pieces you bring in your day-to-day -day life, um, what do you use them for? That's the expansion part. And then you two do these steps over and over again 
in the order of observation and expansion to have a more in-depth conversation that feels a lot better. This is something that if you go into the service world or if you've been to a restaurant ever, you will help um, or you will really start to notice it. If you're feeling, because if you've been in a service position, I'll use mine for example, you're having a lot of the same conversations every single day. A lot of them multiple times per hour with multiple different strangers. You go on autopilot a little bit. This little trick, and this is if the person is interested, will break that flow and set you apart from the consistent same autopilot conversations that this person's been having. So if you've ever worked in a service job as well, you know that you're having lots and lots of the same conversations over and over again. So if you wanna break that cycle on your own, you can make an observation of a customer. And then if they choose to engage or not, then you can expand and now you two are talking. You start with an observation, you go into an expansion. And then that's how the conversation snowballs. Carries for as long as you both have the energy for. Once you've hit the point where you're both kind of like, all right, this was a good talk. Then you can both just depart. Or if the person doesn't particularly want to expand, then that's where you know you can leave it. Okay? This thing is something that you guys can try, something that you can start noticing outside of class in your other conversations, in your conversations with strangers, in your conversations with your friends, by thinking about a conversation as these two steps in order, you would be surprised at how much you learn about yourself and how much you learn about other people that you're interacting with. So, something to keep in mind. And I thank you guys for actively listening. I can tell you guys aren't talking and I appreciate it very much. Um, there is, before we move on to this little section right here, does this make sense? this little two-step cycle. It's something that comes with practice too. I have the privilege of, you know, I talk to a hundred, I'm guaranteed to talk to a hundred different people every single day. I get to try out a lot of material with you guys. So anyway, something to think about, observations and expansions. All right, so let's address the big, dis not a disclaimer, but this big notice right here that I wanna go over. Since this week is on the discussion of professional communications, personal communications, just generally improving conversations, there are aspects of the world that should be considered in your conversations, and that's what we're going to talk about here. So I'm going to read this verbatim, expand on it a little bit so everybody hears me. If you've not been actively listening, now's your time to lock in, tune in real quick. So tomorrow, reading this word for word. We will delve into subjects related to communicating regarding personal privileges, biases, and social norms that create disproportionate gaps between humans of many distinctions. This could be an uncomfortable class period for you tomorrow because you may have learned that you have participated in or been a member of communities that continue these norms. However, it is still important to recognize these things and to understand how they affect communications. If this is something, and I'm not reading here, I'm being serious. If this is something that you are concerned with, please send me a Canvas message. Those are always confidential. Or you can chat with me after class today. I wanna emphasize, this is not personal. When you start to examine some of the things that happen in the world, we're going off book a little bit here. When you start to examine some of the things that are happening in the world, it can feel a little bit weird. It can feel a bit uncomfortable. I want to emphasize that that weirdness, that discomfort is not me or not anybody saying that they are better than you or that they are trying to personally attack you. This is just something that is a fact that we have to address. It's something that you have to be aware of, and it is something that will make you ready for the future. So all I'm asking is that you please be patient and understanding with both yourself and your classmates. You guys got this. I'll close this Zoom room off with one piece of advice. I know it feels kind of serious today. Um, it was actually supposed to be a little bit more lighthearted because we were just going to practice conversing. But something that I want you guys to keep in mind is that you have to live your entire life with yourself. 
There's people who will come and go. There's people who will stay, right? You always have to live your life from start to finish with you. So be patient with yourself. Nobody's done life before. It's your first time. You're going to mess up and it's fine. Just be patient and understanding with yourself. That's all I'm asking. Make sense? Sound good? Cool. Thank you guys for listening. So what we'll do with the remainder of class, I want you guys to practice this observation and expansion um, habits. I want you to also read a little bit more about active listening and some of these small talk conversation starters so that you can become familiar with ways to get around just talking to strangers. Hi, good morning. Doesn't have to be just strangers either. It can be your friends too, but strangers are a good place to start because they're friends you've not made yet. Cool, thank you guys for listening.